Hey, hey, Joe. Look who's coming. Yeah, that's what I call a real fine-looking woman. Yeah, you mind your manners, because she's a married woman. Hey, Miss Edwards, this is a real pleasure, ma'am. Hello, horse. Hello, little Joe. My pleasure, ma'am. Uh, little Joe, why don't you see after Miss Edwards' horse while I help her down? Yeah, well, little brother, why don't you see after her horse while I help her down? Hey. Uh. Joyce. Ben. Oh. oh, Ben. Oh, it's so good to see you again. It's wonderful seeing you. Uh, you'll stay for supper. Uh, oh. Adam, you remember Mrs. Edwards? Oh. Hello, Adam. I remember her. I just wasn't speaking because I was so busy looking. You Cartwright certainly know how to please a woman. Uh, Joe, run in and tell Hop Singh we'll have a guest for supper. Right, fine. Oh, uh, Adam, I... Adam, uh, down in the cellar by the north wall at two cases of Lafitte. Bring up a couple yes, of bottles. Yes, sir. Really, I... Now, look, you've come all this way. Surely you can stay for a little while. Now, we need a lady in this house. You know, I've got these three grown sons, and somebody has to teach them manners. Now, please, come here. All right. But just for a little while. <laughs> I wouldn't go in there if I was you, Miss Edwards. It's nothing, Ben. He's just our new hired hand. He must be lost. Pay no attention to him. Suit yourself, ma'am. Only Mr. Edwards ain't gonna like this. Ezekiel, you can tell Mr. Edwards anything you want to, but Mr. Cartwright is an old friend, and I'm going inside. Anything you say, ma'am. But I'll be waiting for you. attractive, Ben. It gets nicer with the years. It's been years since you've been in this house, Joyce. Yes, I know. I've missed seeing it. I've missed seeing you. All of us have. How's Tom? Oh, all right. Just all right? How is he, really? He's still bitter. He's been bitter ever since the accident. All day long, he just follows me around in his wheelchair. And every night, in front of Ezekiel, he, he calls me names. He, he says the most awful things. Ezekiel, the, the man outside, the hired hand? Oh, he's more than just that. Tom spends half the night drinking and gambling with his hired hand. Drinking and gambling? I thought the accident left him incapacitated. Only from the waist down. Tom drinks himself into a stupor, and Ezekiel carries him upstairs. He never knocks. He just brings him right into the room. And he puts him down on the bed next to me. Then he straightens up. And he looks at me lying there. And he says, Good night, Mrs. Edwards. And goes. Every night it's this. But last night. Usually Tom can't turn over, but somehow last night he managed to. I woke up and I saw him bending over me with a carving knife in his hand. He didn't move. He just, he just sort of smiled at me. You're so beautiful, he said. I can't bear to think of my going first. Joyce, surely you must know 
Tom meant no harm. I don't know. He's always talking about death. His death. My death. I, uh, I've got to go. Joyce, please, stay. I can't, Ben. I... Oh, Tom will be all right. If only he could find something to do to take his mind off himself. He... Oh, I... I've got to go. Oh, Hoss, uh, would you get Mrs. Edwards to us, please? Right, Paul. Joyce. I don't like the idea of his following you. Oh, it's all right, Ben. He'll keep his distance. I'll ride along part way with you. All right. Thank you. Here you are, Miss Edwards. Oh, thank you, Ross. Once it was Pa's gun that hit him. Well, that's a lie. Eat your supper, both of you, and stop talking about it. Oh, look, I didn't mean he hit him on purpose. I meant he hit him accidental. Well, that's two lies. No, that's not what they say in town. Well, that's Mr. Edwards, Joe. Sure, he blames Pa. He claims he crippled him. Well, did he or didn't he? He did not. Hey, well, how do you know? You weren't even there. I was there an hour later. They were out after wild mountain sheep. Mr. Edwards slipped and fell to a ledge, and Paul risked his life trying to save him. Ain't that right, Adam? They were climbing up off that ledge when they fell to another ledge, and that's when the gun went off, getting him in the spine. Well, whose gun? Mr. Edwards' gun. All right, then why does he blame Pa? <sighs> Eat your supper, it's getting cold. Now, boys? Got it, Hi, I'm Pa. I'm sorry I opened the wine, Pa. I didn't know she was leaving so soon. Well, we haven't had any of this since Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's a miracle. This wine, imprisoned in this bottle for 20 years. And each year it seems to grow better. Yep, well, I'm sorry Miss Edwards couldn't make the dinner tonight, but I'm sure glad to be taking part of this wine. Uh, me too. Boys, I need your help. What do you think Tom Edwards could do? Uh, what do you mean, Pa? Well, they're out of money. He squandered everything they ever had. They owe everybody, and he's always gambling. That Zeke fellow is. Does he live with him? Hmm. Mm, I'm sorry, Paul. I wouldn't want you to talk with your mouth full. He not only lives with them, but they owe him, too. Well, what about Virginia City? Maybe uh, he could clerk somewhere. You ever talk with him? Every time he opens his mouth, it's like poison pouring out. Uh, Hoss, this was once a wonderful man, but he was struck down. Life struck him down. Paul, I didn't mean to offend you. Huh? They have a pretty good flow of water on their place, haven't they? And who are we to say that if we were struck down, we wouldn't be pouring out poison, too? Now, what were you saying about water? Oh, well, I was thinking that there's no mill around, and they have a pretty good stream there. We could uh, rig up a water wheel, build a small mill house. They could grind grain. That's a wonderful idea. A wonderful idea. Adam, I want to drink a toast to you. Hey, Paul, can we drink to him, too? He's a mighty bright feller. Downright bright and a real pride and joy to the Cartwrights. Well, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Take care of my horse. Anything you say, Miss Edwards. Did you have a pleasant ride? Yes. I hope so. At least that will compensate a little for all that you have to put up with. Darling, I know it's dreadful of me to make such a fuss when you go out, but you've no idea how awful it is for me to sit here alone without you. 
Let me kiss you. Your skin is so lovely. Your cheeks are pink. <laughs> kiss? I'm awfully tired. I, I think I'll go up to bed. You told me where you've been. I, uh, went to see the Cartwrights. Why? To complain about your husband? Tom, please don't start that again. I love you. I'll never leave you. You know that. I expect Ben received you very warmly, didn't he? Did you get any money out of him? Tom, please. He's very rich. You're very attractive. We need money. Yes, I did go about money. You know that property that my father left me in, in San Francisco? Well, Ben sometimes goes to San Francisco, and I thought that he might sell it for me. Darling, what about that property your father left you in San Francisco? What do you mean? Five acres? That should be worth quite a lot, wouldn't it, Ezekiel? Now, Mr. Edwards, you don't want to go gambling your wife's good land. Oh, no. I'm doing it for her. How's that, Mr. Edwards? Well... She hates you. This way, she could get rid of you. Now, Miss Edwards, you don't want to get rid of me close as I've been to your husband. How would that get rid of him? I'd bet the whole five acres against all we owe Ezekiel. If he loses, then we don't owe him anything, and he clears out. Go ahead. Bet the land. You surprise me, Mr. Edwards. You think I stay with you just for money? You think I take care of you? You think I carry you up them stairs night after night and put you to bed just for money? Now, believe you me, Mr. Edwards, I know I ain't fit to tie your shoe. But just living with you, sir, and Ms. Edwards here, well, I've grown to you two like it was home almost. No, son, no offense, man, but I can't take that bet. All right, all right. Play for five dollars. Will you lend me five dollars? Give me a scare, Miss Edwards. I thought I was going to lose my home. Good night, Miss Edwards. Uh, riding into town, I uh, gotta drop by. See me, see my wife. To see you both, Tom. Sit on the porch if you want to. She's picking grapes. Good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, well, that's a. Uh, it's a mighty fine stream you have here in the property. I hear my wife paid you a little visit yesterday. It was good to see her. Good to see you, Tom. Is it? Tom, I'll be straight out honest with you. I made a definite point of stopping by here this morning. I have a little business proposition I'd like to talk over with you. How would you like to make some good money? There ain't much Mr. Edwards can do ailing chronic the way he is. Tom, I want to build something in your property. A money-making operation. When I get my money out, plus 15%, then it's yours to own. <laughs> Did you hear that? My wife goes to see my best friend, and suddenly I'm in business. I'm rich. What's the proposition, Mr. Cartwright? A mill. A grain mill. Now, there's none around here for miles, and people around here need a mill. Now, you have the water. I have a son who knows how to put that water to work. What are you doing? Trying to get something from me? Tom, I said this is a business proposition. Now, I'll put up the money. And my sons and I will build that mill for you. What do you get, Mr. Cartwright? Water rights forever? You've already said what I want. My investment back plus 15%. If I have that, I'm satisfied. You mean... Hmm. 
That sounds pretty good. Not to me, it don't. Would you be good enough to let Mr. Edwards make his own deal if he so sees fit? Of course, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Never mind, Zeke, Ben. We've been thrown together so much, we're almost like partners. My only thought, sir, is for Mr. Edwards. That's enough, Zeke. Now, you keep out of this. Mr. Edwards, we'd have all those people coming around, all that excitement. He don't hardly sleep nights as it is. Tom, what do you say? Have we an agreement or haven't we? Fifteen percent, huh? Fifteen. Now, you shake on that, we'll have that mill up in a week. You make it ten percent? No. Twelve and a half? Twelve and a half. Oh, I'm mighty glad, Tom. Why, that mill will be a great thing for everybody. What do you think of that, Ezekiel? Wait till I tell Joyce. Well, uh, all right, Tom, I, uh, let's be getting on at the town. Oh, say, uh, we can start bringing the stuff in tomorrow if that's all right. Oh, do that. You do that, Ben. Ben. We'll be friends again. Let me tell you, Ben, in my heart, when I'm not in pain, I mean, in my heart, I never blame you. It was my gun, my fault. Bless you for coming. Goodbye tomorrow, Tom. Fine, Ben. Thought you owned me, didn't you? Thought I couldn't even get up to bed without you, huh? I'll show you. I'll take you to your wife, Mr. Edwards. Would you like to go pick grapes with your wife? I'll make me so much money, I'll hire me a nurse from San Francisco. It'd be a real one, too, not just somebody like you. Now, I wouldn't get excited, Mr. Edwards. You're gonna have another bad night. You hope I have another bad night, isn't that it? You hope I'll have to call for you. Where are you taking me? To your wife, Mr. Edwards. I won't take you to your wife. You forget about my wife, you hear me? You get her right out of your head! Take me back in the house. Yes, sir. Ben! Joyce! Ben! Oh, how wonderful <laughs> to see you. Does, does Tom know you're here? Yes, I just talked to him. You just talked? I think I have some very good news for you. I suggested to Tom that we build a grist mill here and that he run it. What did he say? He's all for it. He likes the idea. Oh, Ben. Oh, I'm so happy. If only this could make Tom happy, too. Remember the way he used to be? I'll help you pick some grapes. Ben. What you're doing is the most wonderful thing anyone could do for us. Now, wait a minute. You're forgetting I'm making a profit, too. I know what you're doing. And then about... about yesterday, I've... I've never complained to you before, have I? I've never complained to anyone. But all these years, I've been dying, too. I know, Jess. Sometimes I think it would have been better for him if I'd left him. My health, my... Just the sight of me seems to infuriate him at times. Just the sheer sight of me. Just... Just your beauty. Oh, Ben. I forgot about that a long time ago. He's a cripple. And I'm a cripple, too. How are you a cripple? Because I don't stand up to him. Because I take every terrible thing he says to me. Sometimes he... he eyes me like a stranger would. He says things he shouldn't. This may all come to an end. You know, he was so happy when I left him. I think the mill may change everything. Oh, I hope so. It's got to be a fine mill. You know, Adam's very clever with that sort of thing. He's made some wonderful drawings. You're so fortunate in your boys. Yeah. Huh. Three fine sons. They could be half your life. Only half. Sons can't be everything. Did you notice how blue the mountains were this morning? Yes, I... I saw them. Ah, 
starting to look very good. Coming along fine, Pa. Hey, Pa, when's Hoss gonna get here with those millstones? She'll be real soon. Well, we'll be ready for him any time now. That's fine. Oh, thank you. Glad to see you pitching in. I wouldn't want to give you any wrong notions, Mr. Cartwright. I'm just doing this to please Mr. Edwards. I still don't think any good's gonna come of it. Well, why don't you give it a chance? Well, I'll give it a chance. I'm just wondering one thing. What's really in this for you, Mr. Cartwright? Hey, Pa. Pa, send me in some more nails, will you? Yeah, coming right up. But it looks so complicated. How did you ever figure it out? Well, it's really not original. It, the design is actually a combination. Some of it comes from the uh, old New England mills, and some comes from the wheels of the miners built here in Nevada. As you see, we've uh, built a flume leading to the top of the wheel. Now, at the proper time, we'll divert the water back through the flume. It'll pass over the top of the wheel, striking the blades, which will turn the wheel, which will dry the shaft, which will turn the upper <laughs> millstone, and presto, you're grinding wheat. It's really quite simple. Oh, Adam, I think you're absolutely marvelous. <laughs> well, actually, the idea is thousands of years old. But imagine what it meant to man before the steam age. Or should be here soon with the millstones. Uh, which reminds me, I better see how little Joe's coming along. Oh, and I better see about Tom. Hey, Professor. What? That's a mighty pretty assistant you got there. Meaning what? <laughs> oh, you're a sly one. I was watching you standing close, bending over, sniffing her hair. I know you bright boys. How would you like to shut your filthy face, huh? <laughs> Well, I'm just doing you a favor, friend. Don't let her husband catch you. He's still handy with a rifle. Ezekiel! Come get me! Excuse me, Professor. I was so busy watching you and Mrs. Edwards, I forgot all about her husband. I don't know what you're up to, but don't make any trouble for Mrs. Edwards. <laughs> It's about time you got here, Professor. Did some of the heavy work. Don't call me that. What's the matter with you? Just don't call me Professor. Here, let me get that. I'm perfectly capable of doing this myself. Anything you say, ma'am. Wheel me down there. I want to see how things are going. Yes, sir. You think it'd be all right? All right? Why shouldn't it be all right? Come on. I mean, the ground's so rough, your legs being so weak. Must you always remind him of that? I didn't mean no harm, ma'am. I was just thinking. Come on, come on. You know, Adam, I gotta hand it to you. I think this thing's gonna work. Thanks. I, uh, I'm sorry about blowing off all that steam a while ago. Yeah, well, that's all right. I'm used to taking all the guff around this family. That's what I'm here for. Oh, sure. You're really abused, aren't you? Here, put this plank up there. See what I mean? Got it? Yeah, why don't you get some light wood? Huh? Well, Ben, you're really making progress. <laughs> Moving right along, Tom. Any reason why I can't be of some help? Why, not at all. As a matter of fact, I think I've got the very thing for you. Ezekiel, move his chair in closer to the wheel. You see these binder rods? Yeah. They need tightening. Uh -huh. Now, here's a wrench. Get to work. Fine. Okay. Oh, Adam, isn't it wonderful to see Tom working again? It sure is. What's the matter? I just think you have the most wonderful father. Now be alarm, folks. Just a signal. Signal for what? The arrival. Look to the east. Horse Cartwright, charioteer. Ah! Charging up with a ton of millstones. Come on, horse. Drive him. Fine, Paul. Have any trouble getting this load across the river? You know, a little bit. Been swimming with it. <laughs> hey, can I get this? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Well, I don't know about you, Mr. Edwards, but I always go by the rule you ought to lock the barn before the horse gets away. What are you talking about? Just a certain party and your wife. 
You know what I think I'll do with you? When this mill is finished, I'll put a rope around your neck and hang you from one of the rafters just to celebrate. Well, Mr. Edwards, you know I'm just protecting your interest. Listen, you filthy snake. I trust my wife. And I trust Ben Cartwright. He's my friend. And if you ever again put one of your rotten, suspicious thoughts in my mind, so help me heaven, I'll kill you. Your friend, Mr. Edwards? I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about his son, Adam. Watch your hands down there with that pole. All right. Let me get this out of there. It's heat. Easy now. Easy. Easy. Okay, let her slide down. Easy does it. Watch your hands, Pop. Now, let her slip. I ain't, I ain't saying she did anything, but the point is... Look, it... just tell me if you saw anything or you didn't between her and Adam. M Mr. Edwards, I don't want you getting excited. Never mind about that. Just tell me what you saw. Well, Adam was... Well, he was kind of brushing up against her here and there. Did he touch her? No, not exactly. It's... Well, it's his eyes, you know, when she wasn't looking at him. His eyes was... Well, you know what I mean. It... It just kind of touching her all over. Of course, you've got to admit that Adam is a good-looking boy. You know, with a little bit of luck, we'll have this mill running by tonight. Tom! Tom, they think they'll have the wheel going by tonight. Isn't that wonderful? Do you know what I think we should have? A party. And let's dance and let's grind the first grain and have the neighbors in. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to have music again? I bet you'd like to dance, wouldn't you? Just to hear the music would be enough. I bet you'd like to dance with Adam. I beg your pardon? What's all this between you and Adam? Between me and Adam? Ever since the mill started, you've been tagging each other around. Tom, I don't understand you. You understand me. You're a woman, aren't you? You're young, you're lovely. Don't tell me you don't know what I'm talking about. Tom, on my word of honor, no such thought for Adam ever entered my mind. Then why are you so happy? Why have you been smiling ever since this mill started? Because of you. Because I thought it would start your life again, and my life. You haven't been tagging Adam around? No. Brushing against him, leaning against him? No. Laughing with him at me? No. You have, both of you! You've been tagging each other around like a couple of simpering lovebirds. What's going on? I don't know. Looks like Ezekiel has done his work. Ezekiel, get me out of here! Excuse me, Miss Edwards. <laughs> you got him so upset, I better take him inside and lay him down for a while. Ezekiel, do I have you to thank for this? No, ma'am. I didn't tattle on you, if that's what you mean. If you come near my wife again, Adam Cartwright, I'll kill you both! Oh, I'll give you my word. It's Ezekiel. He's warped and twisted Edward's mind. Pa, maybe we better stop working on the mill. Well, after I lug these, these stones in here? We'll finish this mill. If our man is mixed up as that's liable to kill somebody. Keep working. Joyce! 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 <laughs> Joyce. Ben, please go away and leave me alone. Joyce. Come on now. Let it out. I've never been so humiliated, so ashamed. I don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, now, take it easy, Joe. You'll ruin the whole thing. Look, I told you it wouldn't fit, Adam. You made the shaft too short. Well, oh, come on, now lift. Now, I lift, horse. Dang it, Adam, if I lift anymore, I'm going to lift the whole earth up. <laughs> lift! Oh, come on, we, Adam? <laughs> Let's call it quits. Quit? Yeah, quits. We did enough work today for ten men. Now, come on, Joe. Give me a few more minutes. I'm hungry, Al. And I'm you give me one reason why I ought to break my back. Because I want to see it work. I want to see this mill grind wheat. I want to eat bread from this mill that we built. You do? I do. He does? He does. Well, why don't you say so, brother? Come on, let's get to work. All right, all together now. All right, let's go. One, two, heave. All right, in she goes. 
Hey! Hey! Get the other side over there. Hey, where'll I get this board up? Let's go. One, two, three. Let's get up to the diversion gate. When I give you the signal, let the water in the flume. Right. Hey, Adam, don't you think we ought to wait for Pa? I said to get it done, and that's what we're going to do. Now, get up there and let up that sluice gate when I tell you. Aye, aye, sir. What do you want? There's one thing I don't want is people shooting at me without a reason. I got a reason, best reason in the world, my wife. Where is she? That's right, where is she? Mr. Edward here has been worried about her. It ain't good for him to worry. How should I know where his wife is? You ought to know where she is. She's with your father, ain't she? He run off after her. Didn't think I knew, did you? I know. Ezekiel told me. I know all about your father, too, from a long way back. It's not the first time he betrayed me. He shot me in the spine. My father didn't shoot you, and you know it. I don't know any such thing. I know it was you Cartwrights caused all my trouble. Mr. Edwards, you're wrong. Real wrong. But I didn't come here to argue with you. I just come to tell you that your mill is finished. We got it going. You think the mill solves everything, don't you? You know what I'm going to do with your mill? I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to burn it to the ground. Does Ben Carter think he can buy my wife with a mill? You mark my words. Before I let him steal my wife, I'll kill him and hurt you! Ezekiel, if you're really his friend, you'll get these wild ideas out of his head. I am his friend, Mr. Cartwright. But what's right is right. Man has a simple duty to protect his home. Ben, I'll always remember this time we've had together today. It was as though we had escaped to another world. It's been that way for me, too. Ben, look! The wheel is turning! Oh, oh isn't it beautiful? It certainly is. Joyce, I just can't let you go back. Ben, please, I... At least spend the night with us at the Ponderosa. Don't go back to that house, not right now. I'm not afraid. Tom and Ezekiel will be so drunk they won't even hear me come in. Besides, with the mill and all, perhaps it will be different again. I've got to give him that chance. Well, just to be sure everything's all right, I'll, I'll ride by first thing in the morning. Ben, thank you for everything. Pa, we've been waiting for you. 
for you. Oh? Why? I was a little worried about you. <laughs> it's mighty thoughtful of you, Adam, but I have a feeling I'm old enough to take care of myself. I uh, ran into some trouble over at the Edwards place. What sort of trouble? Tom took a shot at me. No, I can't believe that. Neither could I. I went up to the ranch to tell him that it would finish with the mill, and he and that hired hand of his were glassy-eyed drunk. Well, what started it? What brought it on? I don't know. Tom had some wild idea about you and Joyce being off someplace together, and he was making threats about killing you if you didn't stay away from her. Where are you going? I'm going right back to that house as fast as I can make it. That man touches Joyce. Ah, What? Want me to go with you? No. You stay here. I'll handle this alone. Pa, ah, Tom's suspicion about you and Joyce. It isn't true, is it? Suppose it were, Adam. How would you feel about it? I'd say that if there ever was a chance, she couldn't do any better. I'd be happy for both of you. Thank you for that, Adam. my house now. Your house. Your money. Your strength that packs me upstairs and puts me to bed. And she's my wife, Ezekiel. You hear that? She's my wife. That's right. Your wife. You owe me quite a bit, Mr. Edwards. I've got a mill. We'll grind flour. I don't make money. Ain't you forgetting something? I won that mill. I'll pay you some way. I'll pay you. Now that you mention it, there is a way. An easy way. You like to gamble, don't you? What are you driving at? I just want to make one more bet with you. Just one cut of the cards. If I lose, you don't owe me anything, Mr. Edwards. Not a thing. You get the house back and all the money you owe me. If I lose, what do I still own you don't already have? Well, just one cut of the cards can prevent that, Mr. Edwards. A gambler like you ought to jump at the chance. Somebody ought to kill you. Somebody ought to stop you. <laughs> well, maybe somebody will. But that ain't gonna be you, is it, Mr. Edwards? My king beats your nine. <laughs> Ezekiel, would you mind bringing Mr. Edwards up to our room now? I don't have to do that no more, Miss Edwards. That's my room now. That's where I'm going to sleep. Even drunk as you are, you know that's not true. Isn't it? Hey, you ask your husband. What does he mean? Miss Edwards, there's some things going on here I think you ought to know about. Tom, what is he saying? He won the bet. What bet? What do you mean? Oh, you're just as drunk as he is. You don't even know what you're saying. No, he's right, Miss Edwards. I won the bet. Tom, tell him to get away from me. Help me! I can't help you, Joyce. I can't help you. You might as well get used to the idea, Miss Edwards. From now on, there ain't gonna be nobody Just but... Get away from me! You touch me and I'll kill you! I don't know how I'll do it, but I'll kill you! <laughs> <laughs> Where well, she'll get over that as soon as she calms down a bit. Will she, Ezekiel? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Why shouldn't I be? You heard her. She said she'd kill you first. Maybe someone's gonna stop you after all. 
Hello, Mr. Cartwright. You should knock before you come into my home. Get out of here. No, Mr. Cartwright. Everything here belongs to me now. You see, I've taken Mr. Edwards' place. Even this chair belongs to me. Joyce. Well, now stay right where you are, Mr. Cartwright. I wouldn't want to have to hurt you. Now you lay your pistol belt on that table. sit in that wheelchair. You're not crippled. That's right, I'm not. I just want to get the feel of it. I want to know how Mr. Edwards felt when he sat in it. I want to know how Mr. Edwards felt about everything. Come on, Joyce. Let's get out of here. No. Now, now you can't, Mr. Cartwright. She belongs to me, too. Don't you understand? Look. I, I have it all here. I kept track of every bet I made with Mr. Edwards. He gambled away everything. And tonight, he gambled away his wife. Well, if you won everything from him, why did you kill him? <laughs> well, he tried to go back on a bet. You, you know a man can't do that. Ezekiel. You see, you're very tired. Why don't you rest and we can talk about it? Go on, Joyce. No, no. No, where's she going? Just outside. No, no, she can't. Now, Mr. Edwards told you that if you tried to steal his wife, he'd kill you. I'm the same as Mr. Edwards now, so if you try to take her, I'm going to have to kill you. Joyce, this is, uh, this is what you want to do. I've had a lot of time to think this past week, and, uh, well, I have friends in Denver. I'd stay with them, and then I'll move on east. All right. You, you go, and after a few weeks or, or months, well, then you can decide what you want to do. Now, whatever you do, don't sell the mill. You use it. Joyce, when you come back... Ben, I love you. But I could never come back. I 
I need you. Remember you told me once that when little Joe's mother died, you had to get away, had to meet new people? Well, think of it that way. Drive into Virginia City. I'd rather we say goodbye here. It isn't easy for me either. <laughs> <laughs> 